right and just please stay with me for the right of the street. We all face the wall in that house on stage. Now to uh, it's my pleasure to welcome tonight's moderator. He is a screenwriter, an essayist, a senior producer at TMZ, and the host of the Red Pill podcast. Put your hands together for Dan Lupin. I'm going to waste no time um, introducing our insanely talented panel. Uh, first of all, did you guys enjoy what you saw? It was amazing, right? Woo! Some of y'all in here are learning about hip hop for the first time. <laughs> Don't be overwhelmed by what you saw. That's how it works. All right, first, uh, co creator and executive producer, Alex C. Place Gary on the show, uh, Jarnell Young. <laughs> Co creator and writer and hip hop legend, The Rizza. <laughs> Plays the rhythm, Ashton Sanders. <laughs> and as Cherie, Zoe Briggs. members of the Wu-Tang Clan shooting at each other, which I didn't expect to have happen. Kind of hard to tour with somebody that shot up your mama's crib. <laughs> um, so the question would be, first off, to the creators of this, um, why this story, why now? Why did you guys decide uh, that the story behind one of the biggest groups in hip hop history had to be told right now? <laughs> well, I mean, um, and I'm just saying this, you know, a lot, I don't know if it was like a super uh, conscious thing, but uh, where we are as a country right now, we're very divided. Um, I think it's a timing story showing how, you know, people who are opposed to each other can come together and create something great. Mm, fantastic. Uh, Riz, for you, what was the situation like as far as creating this? Because you're looking at it through the lens of having lived through it. And a lot of times when you've lived through something, a nostalgia bug bites you. And it's hard to look back on it um, in an authentic um, and honest way. When you're writing something like this, how do you get past that? Well, I think, I mean, if I would have tried to do it maybe 10 years ago, uh, I wouldn't have been successful. But going through the process of making films and uh, you know writing movies and things. So the craft has actually prepared me in a way that I could kind of detach myself, you know, as a filmmaker, as a writer, detach myself from the subject. So all the creative energy that it takes to write a screenplay mm -hmm. can flow through me. And um, I did that, you know? And now, not to say that when I was watching it back, you know, in the editing room, there are certain scenes that definitely hit you in the heart, hit you in the gut. Watching Uncle Hollis, one of the most important men in my life, uh, you know, you know, that always gets me a little choked up and uh, you know, I always sit in a little prayer because uh, he, you know, he was a man that without him, I don't think I would have evolved to the man I became. Word, word. Now, um, Ashton and Janelle, you guys are playing uh, a gentleman who really helped raise it by uh, the Wu-Tang Clan, like I'm 39. So, you know, coming up in the age group that I'm at, this was, they were giants to us. Huge, huge influences to all of us. How do you wrestle with something like that as actors um, to be true to your craft, but also to step into shoes of people that we look up to so much? Like, what do you have to do as an actor to, to deliver authentic performances? Yeah, I mean, at, at first it's a little intimidating, right, to be playing somebody who, uh, as a young actor, this is your first biopic uh, debut. You know, and to be, it's, it's so rare to be doing a, 
might not be that view when somebody on your planet is still alive. It's a little intimidating, but at the same time, um, very cool and uh, quite a rare experience to be having. Um, I would have never thought that I would have been doing this. Alex DeRizzo, he brought me in initially for a meeting and introduced me to the character and to the role and uh, kind of basically like gave me the offer and it was something that I was, uh, you know, kind of like tentative about doing, but uh, it's, it was definitely a, a passion project and again, it was really rad to have risen there for myself and uh, to be able to guide me or if I had questions or needed a type of reference to have uh, him there. And I mean, addressing the characters, you do it the same way as any other character, man. You know, like I feel like we all pick these roles because we know what we are trying to create. And when you're trying to create something so special and so beautiful, you know, uh, you get what we created. And so I think that's super rad. And that's just the basis of that. What? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any pressure, man? You feel any pressure? Um, <clears throat> being from Staten Island, you know, of course, mm. there's not any pressure. But, yeah. uh, yeah. Give it up yeah. to that, man. Give it up to that. But now I'm home I feel like I was um, prepared for this. I've been preparing for this since I was 12 when I used to travel over to the city and use the Wu Tang and what they were about to for my courage, confidence, and stuff like that. So I feel like I'm prepared for this role for all my life. But of course, there's pressure that makes diamonds with the preparation and YouTube and all the social media we have going on. Just get down and get to work, man. Don't fail my city. Because everybody's watching. You're not the other city. Now, Lily, for you, it's you're kind of balancing out things. Um, we got so much testosterone that's going on in the show. Yes. Yes. It's a lot of testosterone that's going on in the show. Yeah. Uh, for you, as sort of being that balance, tell us about your process, how you looked at the role, and kind of what you wanted to say with your performance um, as your I think being one of the only women on the show, it's, it's amazing to be that lighthearted, you know, little sweet side of the show because there's so much chaos and, and masculinity, and then you've got Cherie, who brings out like the soft side of, of Dennis, and not just Dennis, but the entire you know family dynamic and the show and everything. So it's it's an honor to be that uh, light at the end of the tunnel. And then as far as preparation, I think just the experience itself. Like as I grew with you know the show and the process. Um, I would pick up little things. Moving to Staten Island for six months. Definitely. You yeah. moved to Staten Island for six months? Yes, I had to do the show. So <laughs> moving to Staten Island for six months definitely helped me prep. Um, mm -hmm. Alex and Riza, you know, walking me through things and, and the, the discussions we would have um, really helped me. And then I also had the honor of meeting one of Riza's sisters, Sophia, and we had to sit down. And um, it was me and Erica who played Linda, my mother. And um, and it was really a beautiful moment. We just sat and spoke as women. And, you know, we, it was just like a humanistic experience. We just chopped it up in a restaurant and talked about the little things, the family dynamic. Uh, and I got to annotate and take all these little things and add it to my own experience of being a woman in a male-dominated just society. So right. it was beautiful to be able to take all those experiences and then put them into a beautiful project and, um, you know, to see it on the screen is even more dope, so. <laughs> so Riza, uh, the Wu-Tang Clan has uh, approximately 375 minutes. Missing one. Yeah, it's, it's a big one. Um, how involved were the the rest of the legends that you call brothers? Uh, how involved were they in uh, making this and bringing this alive? For me and Alex, we, we have an open door policy for the Wu Tang Clan members. Uh, so whoever's in town, or they want to pop into the writer's room, they can. Uh, you know, our show also follows um, Kawa and Devon, what up? who are, uh, you look at any Wu-Tang album on the back, you'll see is that the producer, Kawa and Devon. <laughs> you know, and um, also the, the, the door was open for them to come in. Met the Man, of course, is an EP on the show um, early on and, and had a lot of uh, say-so and, you know, and just energy to help make it positive. One thing that we do, 
and I'll share this with the audience and shit. We have a weekly Rule Wednesday call every week. <laughs> 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 and it's a good, bad, or ugly. You know, we discuss, we talk. You know, I fill them in, and it is what it is. You know, and if, um, and a few brothers visit our visit. You know. I'm gonna say one thing that was funny, if I could say a little joke here. <laughs> so when you're doing this, I didn't know that you have to like do like script gets proofread by other people and legal terms and all this type of thing. And so and so somebody made acts like because this show is showing, you know, acts of violence, acts of criminal activity, uh, that a lot of young black men we go through in America, as you guys know, right? And so now there's somebody saying, so um, when you were selling drugs, did you have one ounce or two ounces? <laughs> I'm And so I'm cool with that. I've been in Hollywood a while. I did, I did a few shows. So. But now she has to call Ghostface <laughs> and ask him. Right. And he called me after, yo, was that the cops? <laughs> <laughs> Um, for the performers, did you guys have access to, I mean, you obviously, you're a prison, so you can just talk to prison. I mean, how much did you guys interact, like, what was the workflow like in terms of uh, getting down to these idiosyncrasies or, like, who he is and trying to understand what, what Headspace was in back in the day? I mean, I probably made Risen feel super weird. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, um, I remember uh, a Salary Studio session, our first one, when he was trying to teach me how to use the SV-1200, which is the B machine in which he, uh, he made all of his, you know, like, uh, instrumentals off of, you know, what we see in the first episode. He tried to steal, which was approximately 900 pounds. Dedication. Dedication. <laughs> uh, but yeah, man, you know, I remember that's one of our first initial, you know, like hang times and just like watching him talk and kind of he's like saying stuff to me and I'm kind of like repeating it to him. It's like natural conversation and like he's looking at me like, yo. But at the same time, I mean, like all that is necessary. Mm. You know, like for the artist, that's the way that I interpreted uh, uh, the character, you know, the way the audience you interpret the character, you know, and so. With that, uh, that's just my spill of of that. Uh, mm -hmm. There was there was a lot of that. Mm -hmm. You know. So then what about you? Yeah. What was the question again? The question was, did you have you for 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 you, and just were you working with him to to kind of get his? Definitely, he was on tour, but he just still took the time out to actually text me back and call me and let me pick his brain a little bit. But for most part, he was on tour a lot of the time while we were filming. But I was able to gain a lot of information. From him. Just so I can have a little tweaks and a little cadence in the mannerisms that he does when he's uh, interacting with me. So I read that this was actually almost a decade long process, like in order to get this to the screen. Um, that it, it took you guys a while to kind of develop what you were trying to do. I think about um, it kind of started back when that show Game Related was on here okay. or in production, and uh, Francie Calfo. Um, I mean, we talked about it. Brian Grazer had read the Dial of Woe, and we thought that it could be something. He's going to use the bathroom. So <laughs> he, he was like, he, like I was. We, we had a. We wanted to see how long he was going to be able to last. So like, before he, we, he was coming out here, he said, "I really have to use the bathroom." Like the there's people here at the panel were like, "You can't do that now because we have to start the panel." And so we were all wondering how long. <laughs> Yeah, if you would have held the whole time, that would have been big. would have been fantastic. <laughs> but no one's a process. I mean, right. I think it was at least a five, five or six year process from the idea of option of the book, of the option of the book, and then that gave us a foundation. And really, what really held it up was really finding the right partner, the right writer that, you know, I could really feel totally comfortable with to express, you know, these parts of, of my life that, mm. you know, we don't talk in our community, you know that. You know, we kind of keep it to ourselves. Once me and Alice got together, you know, he became my therapist. <laughs> we didn't have no couch. <laughs> but many, 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 many hours and days talking though, and maybe about two years, we cracked it what it could be. 
put, put, the, put it together as they call it a pitch document, mm -hmm. as they call it. Mm -hmm. And uh, bunk, bunk. <laughs> Alex, what surprised you about the process of, of making this? Was there anything that was harder than you expected? Were there any things that, that, that jumped out at you? Oh, yeah. A ton of things were harder than you expected. But, you know, <laughs> you know first time showrunners, and actually, uh, the, the first rapper showrunner ever, <laughs> which is great. You know what I mean? It was, you know, he's always uh, breaking barriers. But, you know, the first thing that I, I'll be surprised that, that um, <laughs> I said that he was going to be quick, and I gotta give it up to you, dog. It's <laughs> 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 Oh no! The first thing that surprised me, obviously, is, is that um, you know I fancy myself as a Wu Tang nerd. I read all the um, liner notes and interviews and whatever, and I just kind of thought they were all boys. And, you know, like, oh, we're gonna start a rap together. And once he kind of started telling me some of the backstory, I was like, oh yeah, no, this is this is for sure a TV series. And, and, and um, you know, so then at that point, it was a, a lot of discussion. You know, so that's the first part. And then it was, I was super pleasantly surprised, uh, um, you know, about our partnership because I'd never really written with with someone before. Mm -hmm. um, and you know. After the first meeting, which I guess I passed a, a litmus test, you know, they told me, said, you know, okay, so if you want to do this, you know, you, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna do it together, you know, because that's really important. Risk. I'm like, okay, you know, and 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 to be honest, I just said, let's see how it goes. See, but it's I never been before. If it's all bad, I'll just quit, you know. <laughs> and and um, um, it couldn't have gone better beyond what I imagined. The best version of it, um, it couldn't have gone better. He's so, you know generous um, and you know I think being an actor a musician and a director like he, he understands you know all the Hollywood shit you know what I mean of how we need to you know there was no kind of having to you know for some people might you know, have to explain that to them especially when it's it's their life and, mm -hmm. and um, what is so um, was surprising and also so impressive is you know listen man rappers you know, I think maybe this generation was a little bit certain from that era, like, just want to be hard all the time. Yeah. Yeah, we got to be hard. You know what I mean? And not, I think the, the, the hardest thing to do is to be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. um, and and he was very willing to do that. He totally got it, and that, that, that's, that's a blessing. That, that's awesome. Um, so, Lee, uh, Ashton, and Mel, you guys are young. You guys yes. are young. I can yeah. smell the smell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, coming from the stage. Like how, like, like you guys, you guys are kids, you're young, you know. So how familiar were you with the Wu Tang's body of musical work prior to that in this? Very familiar. I mean, I feel like Wu Tang is a part of Black culture, rap culture, just like a bunch of different cultures. No matter where you go, Wu Tang is somewhere. Like they're always there. And it's funny, people keep asking me too. Like, oh, so like. Were you listening to Wu-Tang growing up? I'm really young, like, no, I was not listening to Wu-Tang at seven years old. Like, I don't think I should have been listening to Wu-Tang at seven. But, but, you know, I think it's dope that I'm now an adult and I not only get to work so closely with RZA and the Wu-Tang members, but I get to, you know, read the lyrics and understand what they were talking about and like all the details. And you can't understand. Well, <laughs> the show will help you yeah. if you didn't know, you know? So it's dope to be able to, you know, really appreciate and listen to the music now. And then, you know, you can actually visually see how they made this music. I think that 36 Chambers is a great representation of season one. So I love to like listen to the album and you know, watch the episodes as they come out. It's really dope. It's like, ooh, what part of the, you know, show is this song about? Da 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 da. da. So I like the progression of being a six-year-old singing Cream and just knowing it's about money to being 22 and like they are nothing to mess with for real, for real. So. And for you guys, it's even actually added because you're in. You guys got a rap. And. <laughs> That's scary. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know if you guys ever been at your high school lunch table and it's your turn. Everybody's been there. They like, man, what's up? And I'm like, ah, 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 you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, for you guys, you guys got. What was that process like as far as 
having to rap with some of the greatest rappers that ever lived. Man, I didn't those guys. it was the most fun I've ever had in my life. Mm. <laughs> what? The rap has a jizz? Are you serious? <laughs> like, wait, I'm from, like, I'm saying, I'm, I'm a Wu baby. I'm from Staten Island. They put Wu Tang in my similar like, no, like, <laughs> like, 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 no, like that's cool. Like, <laughs> no, that's that's fine. I, it was. I mean, it was it was cool. This this for me was like a deeper level of like artistry. You know, like mm -hmm. I, of course I take every role that I do. I, I take it seriously, but the elements of music obviously were something else to do. And so. I mean, cool, I mean, you know, like, these dudes are, like, so dynamic and so specific, you know, you want to embody them the best of your ability, but, uh, yeah, you know, a little intimidating at first, but we was there for six months, you know, we had the right guidance, and whatever, you know, we had the right people working with this on a musical level, uh, or whatever, and so, yeah, I mean, like, I didn't really know what to expect, to be honest, I knew it would be dope, and I'm watching myself, like, oh, okay, yeah, I did that. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I mean, like, yeah, that's, that's one thing that was cool, Van, is that, um, you know, even when, you know, you know, if I wasn't around, we had uh, DJ Mathematics oh, wow. as yeah. one of the uh, consultants, and, you know, so he's the DJ, he gonna know if you ain't rapping like so-and-so, right. back in so, the booth. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so that, that was pretty cool. They're all, they're all dropping the mixtape. Yeah. <laughs> well, Riz, I want to ask you one specific question because, you know, as someone who's a Wu Tang fan, I'm watching it and I'm seeing Dirty on the screen. It's, uh, it's reminded me of just how one of a kind his energy was. Um, and to be honest with you, if I can be, just like what we lost when, when, when he passed on, God rest his soul. Uh, Talk about that a little bit. Talk about the portrayal of somebody who was so close to you, who is no longer with us, and that hip hop felt his absence um, and his passing so so hard. I mean, he definitely was, definitely was. I would say is right because you know life is eternal, even though right. physical life is not. So he's a very unique individual, and what he brought to music, hip hop, and culture itself was to me the greatest expression of freedom. He was never scared to do what he was going to do, whatever he was going to do with that. I mean, seriously, I don't care if that means stopping traffic on the Girls Arrow Bridge, <laughs> getting out and take a leak, getting back to the car he was that free. Um, to find somebody to play him, though, that was one of our biggest challenges. I mean, I think we kind of got lucky with TJ Adams. Um, uh, our director of the pilot, Chris Robinson, had worked with TJ prior. He, he mentioned them to us, right? And uh, we, we, we was looking, it was hard to find. And the kids studied ODB's mannerism, and, and he, uh, it was fantastic. No, I'm serious, no, no. Yeah. I think, you know, in this particular case, I think him, he's a musician as well. Mm -hmm. I think that actually helped. But normally that doesn't help or something, but for this particular case, it really helped, and I, uh, I think we got really lucky. You know, ODB's son wanted to play the role, and he's a spitting image of his father and, and his energy and everything, uh, but acting is a craft. You just can't get in front of the camera, and it's gonna work, you know what I mean? So uh, he had more development to go in his life. But we got lucky with TJ Adams, and watching the scene where I see <coughs> Jarnell play Jizza, Asked him to play Bobby so in episode three, and, uh, and TJ playing ODB, and they record the song all in together now. Oh, yeah. That, yeah. For me, that's one of those moments as well that really, like, just kind of, you know, like, I, like all my spinal fluids, everything, <laughs> just, <laughs> all just gets stimulated from watching that, you know. Yeah. Last question How tall is Davies? <laughs> Davies? Like, <laughs> I'm watching the scenes. Davies looks like he like not be tall, bro. <laughs> you guys know who Davies? Some some of you guys don't look like Mike. You guys know Davies? Uh, he's some tall as Davies. But uh, but like, bro, like he's, yeah, he plays method. But method man is what six five. Yeah. What? Yeah. yeah. Oh man, I don't know much about your balls like that. All right, well, you guys, uh, the show is fantastic. I really did enjoy it. It's always interesting, by the way. 
I want to thank all everybody on this uh, panel for something. You know, you do these, you moderate these panels, you watch this stuff, and then you got to get out and you got to sit in front of people and you got to lie about what they put out there. <laughs> <laughs> I did not have to lie. This was great work. This was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody give them a round of applause. <laughs>